and welcome back. My name is JLJ and I'm here to tell you about one of the most eagerly anticipated features in SQL Server 2019 and that's data virtualization. What is data virtualization and why is it so eagerly anticipated? Well, simply put, data virtualization enables you to bring all of your data together at query time rather than having to build complex ETL pipelines in order to be able to uh, unify the data in a single query. So uh, what I'm going to do is rather than uh, go through the details of data virtualization at a conceptual level, I'm just going to show you the differences between a local query and a virtualized query, both partially and fully virtualized. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over now to Azure Data Studio. And you can see here I have a workbook open. And um, that, let's go in and start um, um, evaluating that. So here you can see I have a very simple query. I have two local tables in my database. And I, if I run that query, you, you could imagine the result comes back nice and quickly. I have about a second um, and I get my data set back in the notebook. However, what if all of that data wasn't in the SQL Server? What if that data was actually available in remote SQL servers and we wanted to access that data all at the same time? Well, you can use data virtualization to solve that problem. But in order to do it, we need to set up some metadata. So the first thing we need to do is to create a master key. And a master key is a, a key inside the database that we use to protect all of the other metadata inside it. And you can see from the metadata here that which algorithm we, we're using and when it's created and interesting things like that. Now I need to enable the polybase feature in order to be able to access um, remote uh, sources and remote databases and create a database scope credential to be able to authenticate against those remote sources. And you can see here that I've created a few uh, in the past. Um, there's a couple of Oracle and a couple of SQL ones in there as well. But today we're gonna go against a SQL um, uh, data source. And you can see here that in order to do that, I need to create an external data source. Here, uh, I specify my location, in this case, a SQL Server uh, address somewhere in Azure, um, and I pass in that credential to enable that authentication to take place. So let's go ahead and create that. And you can see again, there's the metadata inside the database. Now, as a general rule, I like to keep the external tables which define those external data source objects separate from my internal tables. And I do that using a schema. So let's go ahead and create an external schema. And now we can come down here and create our first external table. And the first external table we're gonna create is web click streams, which is the first table. And in this case, it's more like a fact table. Um, and we're gonna keep, we're gonna store, store that. And so in that external database, we have exactly the same database. We're just using it again um, to uh, uh, illustrate the scenario. And now we can get onto the process of virtualizing a, a clickstream, uh, the web clickstreams table. Here you can see I have the same table, web clickstreams, but now I'm using that EXT schema, so I'm accessing the external table. But to all intents and purposes, the rest of the query is exactly the same. If I run that query now, you'll see it takes a little bit longer because we're going to go and get that data remotely. And you can see it's about three and a half seconds. Um, but we can see that we've got that data um, here and it's exactly the same. So um, everything underneath the hood is completely transparent to me as a user. Now, what if I actually go ahead and virtualize the second external table in this query? And you remember that the first one was wet clip streams, the, the second one is the item table. So let's go ahead and do that. And now I have both tables virtualized. So now, what happens when I run this last query? This last query is going to run exactly the same query, but both, que both external tables are virtualized. And you can see that actually the query is almost as fast 
as the preview as the first version, the local query. Now, why is that? Why do we get this difference in performance? Well, the reason is is that if you look at this, SQL Server is intelligent enough using its uh, cost-based optimizer to understand that both the tables are external and they come from the same source, and that it can see that it can push this join and the aggregation down against that remote source. And so we're leveraging the compute of that remote source to resolve this query in real time. But that gives you a quick overview of the kind of capabilities that you get out of using data virtualization technology and how you can actually transparently present that data back to an end user without having to make physical copies of that data, without having to move it or build a complex ETL pipeline in order to be able to query data in real time. Thanks very much for joining, and I look forward to catching up with you again soon.